Hello everyone, it's Steve with FTR Owners Club. A couple of days ago on X, Steve Fambro posted this picture. Um, it is a picture of the tub looking from the passenger side uh, point of view. And so this is the driver's side and here's the passenger side. And you're looking, he's he's kind of highlighting this cross uh, this cross car beam. And this looks like it is, I, I can't tell if it's aluminum or steel. Kind of looks like steel to me, but it looks like it's a stamped piece, um, not a forged piece, but made out of stamped sheet metal. Um, and this is where they're gonna attach all the HVAC stuff and the steering column and the uh, the screen and things like that. The one thing that uh, that stands out in here is like obviously this is asymmetric. So if you want to have a right hand drive Aptera, you're gonna have to re-engineer this cross member beam. And I think I was looking back at the renders of the tubs. This tub is asymmetric. And so it's not it's not the same in the front. So I believe what's going to have to happen, unfortunately, for people that are waiting for right hand drive is they're going to have to put a whole new tub. There's going to have to be a whole new tooling and a whole new tub to make it right hand drive. That's my guess. I'm not 100 percent sure about that, but that's just kind of my take on it. Um, unless they can this asymmetry of the tub um, takes into account the ability to to switch the steering column to the other side, which I don't know how it would be like that if it's asymmetric. I think the asymmetry is for the steering column and the driver and passenger side asymmetry. So th I, I believe that they're gonna need another, um, another whole nother tub. I mean, they're definitely gonna need a new cross member, um, this stamp piece, but I think this is probably relatively easy to make a different cross member piece. Um, but they're going to need to do a whole new tub. Okay, but this is the more interesting thing. On o o October 6th, Aptera on X released this picture. And this is a picture of the Vitesco EMR3 motor unit. Um, so this is a motor, inverter, and transmission unit all in one. Um, and you can see that it's inside the bank and the frame. So those pe there were there were some people who were like how can they make it fit um, when they were planning on having in wheel motors and hub motors this whole time there's no way they're going to make it fit without uh, re engineering the tub and the and things like that now I you know like we said that that decision happened months ago like a year ago probably at this point or maybe even more so they um, I believe they had to re engineer the chassis a little bit the frame. Um, but the bink still fit. The bink did not have to change. So you can see here it's in it's in the vehicle. Now it's a little hard to tell because they have this very aesthetic um, narrow uh, field of uh, focus thing where like this is in focus and this is out of focus and this is out of focus. So it's a little hard to tell the orientation of this thing. The way that I'm interpreting this is that this is the front, this is the back. This is a hatch right here. The hatch opened up, and so this is the bottom. Um, that that I think that makes the most sense. I don't think this is the back because this does not look like the firewall um, towards the cockpit. I think this is the front of the vehicle. Um, I guess it could be a shot from the bottom up um, rather than the top down, but I think this is a top down view. Um, anyway, looks awesome. You know, it looks so shiny and, and cool. And it does fit in there, fits in nicely, and um, we're getting close, guys. It's it's uh, so they have the they have it, it, it. This means that they have the bink together, which we knew about. Um, they have the bink mounted on the frame, and now they have the drivetrain mounted in the vehicle. I think now what's obviously left to do is we haven't shown us, but maybe we'll see this in the next couple of days is they're gonna have to put the control arms, the suspension and the tires on the thing. And then once they have that on, I think we're, we're very close to having a drivable PI2 that they can start doing the, the low speed testing on. And then um, remember Chris Anthony said that they'll first do low speed testing and then they'll slowly ramp up the speed and eventually um, they're gonna do high speed testing on PI2 and PI2 will be kind of a uh, drivetrain testing mule, but it won't have all the A surfaces of the outside. 
So you can't do any um, good range testing because it, it won't be that aerodynamic. Um, we're gonna have to wait for PI4 for that. And I believe that they're making PI2, 3, and 4 kind of concurrently, which would be a good thing. Um, so I'm thinking based on this picture, we're gonna see something driving around in a couple of weeks. Let's hope that's the case. I'm crossing my fingers. So maybe mid to late October, we're gonna see a driving uh, PI2 driving around and hopefully we'll hear about it. All right, thanks for watching guys. Let me know what you guys think your predictions are on a driving PI2, uh, given this new information. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, everyone.